I felt what seemed like rubber between my legs around my junk. Alien abductees, or people who have claimed to see a UFO, what's your story? 1997 Colorado Springs, Colorado. I was 8 years old, playing in the sand volleyball court at the park down the street from my house. I was engrossed in my activity, burying my collection of Happy Meal toys in the sand, and then digging them back out, repeat. I was looking down, but decided suddenly that I needed to look up, because the world around me had lost all sound. There was no longer any ambient noise. No traffic noise from the busy streets, just a block over. No more dogs barking. No more birds chirping. I looked at the street that bordered the park, and that is when I saw it. It looked like a stealth bomber turned sideways, nose leading, one wing down toward the road and the other pointed up at the sky. Completely shiny black in color, as tall as a house, shaped like an arrowhead. It was cruising the street at 3 miles per hour. Just gliding over the road. I watched it for maybe 20 seconds. As soon as it had passed behind some two-story houses and out of my sight, I got my hearing back full force. I ran home with my piss-soaked pants and never spoke a word of it to anybody. I occasionally suffer from sleep paralysis. It developed in my early 20s, and I've had the alien abduction dream. My dad and I love to watch shows about aliens, so I assume people who claim they were abducted had some form of sleep paralysis. It started with flashes of blue light, and I felt myself being lifted out of bed by the chest. I was blinded by a white light, and I could hear a loud mechanical whirring. When I woke up, I was sitting up in bed with my chest stuck out. My arms were holding me up. The experience was the most intense sleep paralysis dream I've ever had. I can see how someone else could have that dream, panic, and tell everyone about it. I was on a wildfire just south of Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah. We were in fire rigs driving to the incident area, four trucks in close convoy, when we heard helicopters. Eight black military choppers escorted us in formation for like 10 miles. We assumed they were just doing drills and using us for fake target practice or something. A little while later we are parked and about to start hiking to the fire line when suddenly a thin column of smoke shoots probably about 200 feet into the sky. It was a good mile away but the concussion was pretty significant when it hit us, and the noise was still ridiculously loud. We thought it was probably no big deal, we knew we were near a strike zone. A good 5 minutes later an aircraft like nothing I have ever seen flew by us at maybe 500 feet. It was flat black and sort of rectangular but with fins and wells on the underside. It was moving pretty slow and was dead silent so I have to assume it was some sort of stealth glider. It sounds ridiculous but it immediately reminded me of a huge, flying bat mobile, Time Burton era. After that some military personnel got on our radio frequency and instructed us to leave the area immediately, when our crew chief asked who it was and why they signed off and the incident commander, the guy in charge of managing the entire situation, came on the radios and said we were evacuating the area. They sent us to a completely different fire about a hundred miles to the south and never told us why except that it was higher priority which was BS. It was already out when we got there and we just assisted crews in the mop-up operation. The thing that confuses me about this is that if the army didn't want us to see that crap or if it was dangerous why didn't they keep us clear of the area in the first place? Either a communications breakdown or they had an out crap situation going down, and had to get us out of there without warning. I can't say for sure what happened to me that night. But here is what I know. I was driving home for the weekend from school at Indiana University. It takes me about two hours to get home, and I left Bloomington around 10 p.m. At exactly 10.53 I am on a rural stretch of the two-lane highway I take home, and I notice what appeared to be flashing lights behind me. I thought, great, I'm getting pulled over, so I turned onto the next country road about a quarter mile from where I noticed the lights. As the car came to a stop and I started to open my glove box to get out my registration and proof of insurance, the lights suddenly disappeared, and no car drove past. Now here is where the story takes a turn for the weird, and I am sure you guys will think I'm just making it all up, because it really does seem like something straight out of a typical UFO movie or story. The electronics in my car started to go haywire. The radio was randomly changing stations while the volume kept going up and down while the dome light and headlights start to flicker and turn off and back on. This was at 10.56 p.m. I start thinking to myself that my battery must be failing, or else I have a short somewhere in the electric system of my car. So I lean down to pop the hood so I can take a look at the battery, and that is the last thing I remember doing. The next thing I know, I open my eyes and see nothing but the night sky full of bright stars, it was a cold night and it seemed like I had never seen stars that bright in my life. 
I sat up and looked around, and I saw absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. I was in the middle of a field, surrounded by corn stalks left over from the recent harvest. As I started to come to my senses I started to freak out. Where am I? Why the hell am I asleep in the middle of a field? Where the hell is my car? I got up and started walking toward the distant headlights I could see from a road about half a mile away. When I got to the nearest intersection I looked at the signs which read 350N and 50W. I was half a mile away from my car which was just right off the main road. I started walking toward the headlights I could see on the main road. I can't say how long it took me to walk the half mile but it couldn't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes. When I arrived at my car, all the lights were out, my battery had died which struck me as odd because I couldn't have been gone for that long. I looked at my phone which was sitting on the passenger seat, and the time was 2.17 am. Over three hours had passed since I turned off onto the side road for the flashing lights behind me. I remember sitting in my car completely dumbfounded, wondering what the hell had just happened to me. After about half an hour of just sitting there, I remembered that my battery was dead, so I got on the phone and called AAA to come out and give me a jump. It took about an hour for them to get out to me since I was a good distance away from the nearest town, during which time I just sat in silence, running through the possible scenarios in my head concerning what had just happened. To this day I couldn't tell you what really happened to me that night. All I know is I can think of any plausible explanation as to why I woke up over half a mile away from my car in the middle of a cornfield more than three hours after I had stopped. I have only shared this story with one other person, my uncle. I am sure people would either look at me like I'm crazy, or they would call BS on the whole story. And I can't blame them. If somebody came to me with a story like that, that so closely mirrors the stereotypical encounter story, I probably wouldn't believe them either. I've seen a couple of weird lights occasionally, and I have no recollection of being abducted, but when I was 12 or so, I felt something hard and round in my earlobe. I told everyone and they said it was just an under the skin zit, pretty normal for someone my age. But it was there for six months. Annoyed, I decided to do some self-surgery. I could feel it very near the surface and poked a hole in my ear with a sterilized needle. Blood everywhere, I could feel this thing and I squeezed up, towards the hole I just pierced. Out pops this tiny metal ball. Maybe half the size of a BB gun pellet. It was black metal, completely spherical, with an indentation around the center, and teeny tiny golf ball-like indentations. As I was rolling it around in my blood-covered pictures, it slipped, spun around the sink a couple of times and fell down the drain. At 12, I had no idea what the hell to do with it, and my parents didn't believe a word I said and told me to just put some tea tree oil on my zits next time. I have never had anything like it since. Not a very spectacular story but true. I've always felt some encounter stories were real, but what made me truly believe was when I was standing outside one night, watching the stars. It was late, maybe 2 a.m., and out in the country so it was dark, no street lights, very little to no moon. I was watching what I thought was a satellite moving across the sky from right to left. Didn't think twice about it as I saw them all the time. Suddenly, the satellite stopped and shot off fast, totally disappeared, at a 45 degree angle from the direction it came. I have never ever seen a satellite change direction ever. It startled me so much I stood there for a bit wondering if I really saw it or not. But I did, 100% certain. It's unfortunate no one was there with me that night. Okay, here it goes. The first time I had ever seen anything I was 7 in Houston, Texas. I used to like to climb on top of my mom's suburban in the driveway and stare at the stars. One night I saw an intensely bright floating light over the tree line probably about a half mile away. I hollered but nobody came to see it. I did not see anything else until March of 2008. This experience happened between the 10th and the 15th, but I can't give a specific date because I was up for four days trying to come up with some explanation to satisfy what I had seen. This was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. My mother lived in a garden home community, all houses the same size, all one story, and you had great visibility distance wise. I walked out of my buddy's place at exactly 4 AM to a bright starry night. When I walked out something caught my eye to the left of me. I looked over and saw a bright blue, yellow, green, white, red, orange strobing flashing light floating silently to the left. I stood in awe at it, and did not want to go grab anyone because I didn't want to miss anything. I watched as it passed in front of the moon behind my friend's place, and I saw the outline of the craft. It was a teardrop, sunflower seed type shape, and the craft seemed to have the lights being transmitted from the top half of it. 
It was almost as if it was transmitting some type of light pattern upward. It also had a dark, thin, smooth line of exhaust that disappeared 50 to 75 feet behind it. This all occurred no less than 400 yards away from me. After it passed the moon, I ran inside and grabbed someone. He saw it but it was too far away to make out what it was. I went home which was only a few blocks away and looked out from the driveway the same direction the first craft had come from. I saw two dim white lights slowly coming over the horizon at a slow pace heading towards me. I then ran inside and grabbed my mother out of bed. We stood there for about 20 minutes while five separate crafts flew over us, first came two, then two, then one, about six to seven minutes apart from each other, maybe 20 miles per hour, maybe 200 feet up completely silent. The way that they looked from underneath was each one had two huge bright white lights which were maybe 30 to 40 feet across each, but they were so bright it was hard to get a good estimate. They also had a pulsating red one between the white lights that dimmed and relit. I would estimate from the size of the white lights that each craft was maybe between 150 to 200 feet wide. The last craft that flew over us flew over lower and slower than the first four had. Then, it made a noise. It let out a sound that to this day haunts me. These crafts flew directly over us and I believe that the sound was an acknowledgement. Whatever was piloting it, knew we were watching it, kind of like a hello. I immediately started crying, I had no idea what I was looking at or had just heard. The second big experience I had occurred a couple weeks later. I was standing in my driveway smoking a cigarette listening to my iPod somewhere around 2 AM. I decided to pause my iPod to turn on the backlight, waved my hand over it a couple times making somewhat of a strobe pattern, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything come up, but I got that being watched feeling. I looked up, and directly above me was a trapezoid shaped craft with rounded edges that had a dark red and black pulsating glowing outline. It was like flowing electricity. It was not even 75 feet up, I could have hit this thing with a rock. I stood there while it hovered directly above me completely silent for maybe 10 to 15 seconds, while it made this kind of motion similar to the ball that Luke trained within Star Wars. It hovered side to side front to back in a smooth motion, never getting more than 20 feet away from its original position. It was extremely fascinating, but I was frozen stiff. After those few seconds, I waved one hand at it in a friendly manner, it then changed light pattern and hovered away behind my house. Upon deeper inspection, the fact that it knew that I saw it but made no effort to evade my detection makes me think it wanted me to follow it, although I was too freaked out to think about that at the time. I have seen that same craft on three other different occasions, once again in Tuscaloosa, once in Hoover, and once in Bessemer. The time I saw it in Hoover was at an apartment complex at the top of a huge hill with a great overlook. It was night time and I was with friends. Over the overlook, I saw a grey craft facing my direction that looked similar to a Hoth fighter, forgive the Star Wars references, and as soon as I saw it, it took off to the right silently extremely quick. The times in Bessemer and Tuscaloosa, the trapezoid shape appeared in the sky solid white, stretched to twice its length, then the bottom shot up to the front, like it hit light speed or something. I do frequently see what I like to call streaks. They look like shooting stars only very low, move slower, but they still have tails that stream behind them. They can also appear in many different colors. One strange story is one night when I had a dream in Tuscaloosa. In the dream, I couldn't see or hear anything, but I could feel things. I was laying on something cold, and I felt what seemed like rubber between my legs around my junk. It was very strange to me since a lot of people who report abductions report sperm and eggs being taken for breeding programs. The next morning, I went to let the dog out in the backyard, which is very small. To the left of the patio, there was a solid white ring in the grass that was maybe 8 to 10 feet wide. I showed my mother and she had told me that she heard a noise that woke her up the night before, but she just dismissed it. Another extremely confusing experience I had, occurred in my driveway in Tuscaloosa. To give you an idea of where this occurred, look up Shelton State Community College. The house was less than a quarter mile from the campus in the Englewood neighborhood. It was nighttime and I heard this static that I could compare to a jet, I looked over and directly above the community college was a light blue slit in the sky. I would say it was maybe 200 yards long, completely vertical, and had what looked like white electric currents coming off of both sides of it. I looked at it and maybe about 25 white things shot out of the slit to the left one at a time at a quick pace leaving the trail behind it that I previously talked about. After they passed, the bottom of the slit went upward until the slit closed, and it made a strange sound, and then it was gone. I've also had a bunch of experiences with orbs. Some solid lit that float across the sky or move in strange patterns, and some that brighten up to a great intensity and then fade as they pass. 
After that first big experience I started doing some research because I was so confused. I understand that I've had an abnormally large amount of experiences, and I honestly can't tell you why, I wish I could. I found a type of UFO witness called a contactee. These people are similar to abductees, except they are kept up with. I have no idea why I have had so many experiences, and I have only listed a fraction of them. My best guess would be that since I acknowledged the presence of whatever it was I was seeing, it decided to keep up with me. It's kind of a gift and a curse. There are so few people that I can talk with about it and be taken seriously. I want to seek hypnotherapy to see if there might be anything else I could uncover. I'm grateful but still don't know much about my experiences. If you all can get anything out of what I shared then great. I was traveling back home with my mom from my aunt's house on a warm, sunny afternoon. While I was sitting in the passenger seat, an object just appeared in the sky a little to our left. We both saw it immediately. The size of it is what was shocking more than anything. It had the classic saucer shape and was shining brightly because the sun was reflecting off of it. We continued driving down the road a few seconds, just admiring this craft when all of a sudden we saw something I still don't believe to this day. It just vanishes. Disintegrates. Disappears. Whatever you wanted to call it. I looked back at my mom and I could tell by her expression she had seen the same thing. Since this sighting, I have always been interested in UFOs and the possibility of other life in our universe. This object in the sky was definitely not a helicopter, airplane, or a flock of geese. My mom and I still talk about the sighting we had and can't come up with a reasonable explanation as to what we saw that day. This is my UFO story and it is not a hoax or fabrication. Everyone always laughs at me when I tell this story, but that's fine. I know what I saw. Back in in spring of 1997 a group of us neighborhood kids were looking up at the night sky observing the Hale-Bopp comet. I grew up hours from any major city so the view was pretty clear. After a while we started to notice a red and a white dot circling around each other making sudden movements in every direction. Like no aircraft I have ever seen or have ever seen since. At a certain point they merged into one craft then shot out three smaller crafts. Although we couldn't tell whether it was a craft because they just appeared to be balls of light. This went on for a couple hours. Right before the lights disappeared, they accelerated at lightning fast speed into the darkness. We all went home terrified of what we saw. The next day on the front page of our small hometown paper it said it received several calls, the explanation they gave was that the local airport was testing aircrafts. I'm sure how much I believe that story because of what I saw. To this day whenever I see my friends that were there that night, we'll talk about it. None of us can be sure what we saw but to this day none of us have ever seen anything like it. At Ray West Virginia. One night a few years back, my friend, who is driving, and I were taking his girlfriend home, when he decided to take the long way home. As we are driving along this fairly deserted back road, I began to zone out and I stared at this blinking red light off in the distance and casually think to myself, I wonder when they built a cell phone tower all the way out here. When suddenly it blinks, and is dramatically closer than it was just a moment earlier, at this point my friend points it out and stops. It blinks once more and is directly in front and on top of us, the red light is so bright it floods the car in a deep scarlet hue. I lean forward so that I can look directly into the light, in that brief moment I feel a flood of negative emotions. The closest description I can offer is to be naked under a giant microscope, and having every pore examined thoroughly. I then looked away from the light, towards my friend and asked him to drive, he barely responds, apparently he is in a similar state. Then he snaps out of it and starts driving. As we get away and down the road, I notice the red light isn't fading and the interior of the car is still clearly lit by it. I look out the window and to my horror the light is following us, and is so for approximately 1 to 2 miles. The light unexpectedly veers off to the left and comes down to ground level in a patch of trees adjacent to the road. My friend stops the car again and continues to stare at it and abruptly declares he is going to get out, and looked at it like he is in some sort of trance. He opens the door and I grab his arm and tell him if he does I will get in the driver's seat and leave him, that we had to leave that instant. He looks at me and seems to come clear. He punches the gas so hard the tires lose traction and spin. The light remains stationary as we rode away but I've never looked at the night sky the same. Thanks for listening to Radio TTS, hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. And let me know in the comments what you think are the explanations for these stories.